Hi guys and welcome back to A's Workshop. Um, where are we? We're August 5th. I'm doing the intro. I, I recorded this a few days ago. We're sort of late evening. I finished my uh, working from home as it were. Um, oh, on that note, a little bit of good news. I've been shielding since the 24th of March. So that pretty much means, uh, for health reasons, I haven't been able to leave the house. Um, yeah, it drives me absolutely nuts. I'm a fairly social person and not being able to interact with other humans apart from sort of friends and family or family, the wife. Um, last weekend my daughter was up for a few days. Um, she was allowed to come and all the rest of it but again social distancing. It's been hard guys um, but we're nearly through this now and I'm back in work on the 17th of August which is absolutely fabulous. I can't wait. So let's get on with this x-axis power feed so we're going to continue with the mechanical parts of getting the motor mounted on the end um, so that it's physically able to drive the lead screw few bits of aluminium plate that sort of thing let's get on with it show you where we get to Oh, that was uh, one end done. Um, I'm making two of them at the same length. Um, they're both going to be 240 mil. So I've got the inner piece and the outer piece. And they well, we're going to start off with two pieces the same. It may change. Uh, make it up as we go along. The usual design strategy. So let's just get a bit of this muck out of the way. So just clean that end up. Flick it round the other way, put it somewhere near. I'll be putting that clamp on first. Okay, that's a clamp on there. Get rid of my muck from over here. I've got a parallel I can just put against that face. Set that up with a square now. Oops. A little bit more. That's that. Just nip these two. Check it. Yep, put the third clamp on. Okay, just bring that table back out of the way. We'll take a skim off here, we'll have a measure and finish it the size at 240. And it should be about 2mm over length as we stand. We're going to take a half mil cut. We'll have a measure. Okay, that's about half a mil. two pieces now um, one's 240 long the outer one I've left at 250 for now because I don't know um, maybe I'll need, need a little bit more metal on it and I can always make it smaller I can't make it bigger so I'm gonna set this up now uh, to cut out a pocket it's gonna be the same shape as that so we're gonna make that up as we go along so just clocking it in now a bit lower this ends loose that ends nipped So 
we need to mark out this shape on this plate in the right place. So the table's 180 mil wide. Um, if I just come from the end here, that oil nipple is sitting smack on 90. So I know that the shaft is centre of the table. So we've got that. So if I, first of all, give myself a centre line. Just with the calipers. 90 millimetres. Okay. So depth down to that plate. I want the aluminium to sit half a mil below surface. So whatever that reads, less half a mil. And it's reading... Strangely enough, it's reading 12.7. Let me just sign a bit of paint there. Actually reading 13. So 12 and a half mil. Down from the top would be where the hole starts. I'll give myself a little bit to play with. Go 12.3. So. There's my top line. So I'm wondering whether to put a square cut out in here. I can't see any reason why I shouldn't put a square cut out. Um, trying to pick up all these angles would be a bit silly. Um, so I'm going to put a square cut out in there. So let's see. Maximum size 110. So I'll get a sharpie out. Where are you? Don't want a green one. Right, so maximum size, we're going to just put some lines on. 110. That's going to be 55 either side of the centre line. That's my zero as the top. So what is the overall thickness of this plate now? So I don't know if I can get in there with the calipers. I can, I can, I can, I can. It is 66 and a half. So, I'm right, going to have a hole in here. Obviously this is way oversized. And that there is going to be 66.5. And I think that'll do us. So with an 8 mil cutter, I set my X on zero on the DRO. Uh, allowing for the 4 mil, 55 I was, oh, uh, either side of the centre line, so only 51. So I'm going 51 left and right. I've come just close to that 12.5 line. I'm going to do a slot in the back there first. So, everything's set, yeah. Just lock my Y axis. And... Okay, so we're going to go for a tour of the perimeter now. I'm on my zero there. Get a bit of uh, bit of WD-40 looking around the place. That's only taking a point one cut across there. I've got to go into 51 on my DRO on this corner. So we'll get a little squeal because I've been to 50.9 so far. So 50. There we are, 50.9. 51. That way now in Y. This has got a 0.5 left on it. Another squeal in this corner as I go to 58.5. A little bit more. There. Back the other way, pronto. There we go. 2.5 off this face.
again into 51 on the DRO. Back the other way, clean up the final face. We might get a little squeal in this corner as well as I get to zero. There's the zero. I'll come back off just to make sure I haven't missed a bit in the corner there. That's it. I just deburr the pocket. Now I got one of these. Um, shoot, gonna have got it. It's been in the box for years. Probably needs a, a bit of a honing on the blade. A little high speed steel deburring tool. I've been uh, I did look the other week at one of these Noga deburring tools. Um, you know the sort of multi-pack that does a bit of everything. Um, and well I'm, I'm just too mean. <laughs> they are not cheap. I know they're brilliant. I've never had one of those. Ooh that's awful. Yeah I think it's going to be a finish off with a needle file drop. It works fine in the little corners, but it won't go along straight. That was better. Yes, um, just too mean to buy myself one. <laughs> Might put it on my Christmas list to uh, my wife. How's that sound? Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. Not that Christmas is anywhere near anytime soon, but uh, yeah, there's an idea. She's always saying you're horrible to buy for. She says, What do you want? For your birthday or for Christmas? And like, I don't know, I don't need anything. <laughs> I suppose you get to a time of life where you don't. But you never get to that time of life in the workshop where you say, Oh no, I don't need anything. <laughs> Probably don't need anything. But needing and wanting is a different story, isn't it? Well, moment of truth time. Right, that fits on me. Eh? Slight problem I'm going to have is that oiler. I may scallop a little bit out of there and I'll put a hole in the lid. I could actually drill a hole down through there. Have a look what size my oiler bottle is and I might put a little half round cut out in there just to. Uh, Allow me room to get into that oiler. So I've decided on a position for two holes to bolt it on the end of the table. Um, I've got my little Rome chuck in its uh, arbor there. So we make sure we're not going to hit the table. We're going into the slot before we do anything. Otherwise we'd be on parallels. Um, just a little fast. So there's a couple of centre pops. It's not critical because I'm going to spot it through. So I have got a little bit of lateral wiggle room on this. It's going to be handy a bit later for tension in the belt. So I'm using N5 screws. So I'm going to put six and a half mil holes in here to give me that movement. Um, I might actually even go seven mil holes. Now I'm going to use M5 screws with washers. The heads haven't got to be countersunk or anything like that. So I've got to do a slotted hole. So there's no need to <laughs> over-engineer it. So I can always come back and do that later if I need to, but I can't see it being a problem. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. In fact, I'm going to get a 7mm drill out now. I spoke about it on camera. I made the decision as I was going along. So... Oh, we'll have to go up the way here. In fact... I don't think this truck will take a seven, will it? I think it takes a quarter. All right. Is it six and a half it'll take? It will take six and a half. 
All right, we'll go six and a half, and I'll have to be a bit more careful. <laughs> I'll open them up at a later stage, probably. Let me just... Yeah, we're all right. We don't want a... Uh, a chunk out of our table, do we? What's that one? Should have used my little drill press for this really, but... In fact, with hindsight, what I should have done is put the uh, tapping drill hole size through here so that I can use it for spotting and I'm getting ahead of myself. And we're okay. <laughs> Plenty. Okay, that was just a three and a half. That's the four point two. Pop and drop. That's it. So that's one in, locked in position. Just mark that. In with a three and a half again. So I'm just boring this hole out and I'm aiming for a size um, two millimeters larger than the pulley on the hand wheel here. The pulley's about 67 mil. I'm aiming for about 69, give myself a mil clear to the side. There's a little aluminium or little steel rings, the uh, belt retainers. They don't run perfectly true. So, yeah, I'm basically just having a crack at this now. I'm getting towards the, the major diameter. I'm having to go quite slow because uh, the offset weight of the... The offset weight of the boring head... Hang on. Come out of there, you little monkey. Yeah, the offset weight is, is causing uh, head wobble. So, yeah, I'm just basically gashing it out to size... So I've decided to go to more like 70 mil. So this should be a final little skim pass now. Uh, to give myself a bit of room for slotting left and right, but belt tension and just a little. Just hand digging down through here. That's it. I'm just doing a little experiment um, to make sure I get this right. Uh, the centres between the, the spindle uh, and the motor spindle 
and the lead screw. So what I've done, I've clamped that down on me, um, picked up the centre, and I'm going to move across in X. I've got a 10mm spotting drill in here, which is a perfect fit in this gear. So I'm just going to come somewhere near. Just going to bring that down into the I'm hitting on something there. No, I'm on my uh, I don't want to be touching the workpiece. Something like that. I'm just going to wind across keep going until I get the belt tension about where I want it. I have got movement to adjust, but I, I, I don't want to be, I want to get my centers. I think I have to put it. Yeah. Okay, so that's reading, well, 117 millimeters. So I'm making note of that now. 117. So if I set my centers between this hole and the hole where the motor's going to go, or the center spot of the motor at 117, I'm going to be pretty much in the middle point of tight before I start, but I will allow myself a little bit of room. Now I have got jiggle room in my plates, a mill here, a mill there. That's, it's in my design. So, right, okay. So I'll just pop that back off again now. Okay, now when I did this, I swapped the DRO to incremental mode. Uh, no, I didn't. I swapped it to absolute mode. I was in incremental. So I'm just going to pop this back off again. Get rid of all this. So if you think of, I suppose one way you can use your absolute and incremental is as two separate datums. Um, so I want to come back to the centre of this hole now. So I'm going to bring myself somewhere near. Let's call it there. Um, let's just go up to the DRO. Right, so I was messing about, doing all sorts. Um, completely went off where I was to start with. But I want to come back to that zero. And I've reset centres and what have you. So if I go back to incremental now, that's basically the datum I was on previously. So if I go back, where are we? Ooh, too much. <laughs> Let's get this one in somewhere near as well. Where are we? Oh, back to the tripod. That's my hand wheel whacking the tripod. I'm just going to whack it again. Anyway, you get the picture. Back on zero, zero now. And I'm back to um, the centre point of that hole with my spindle. So what I did, um, when I was on my zero originally, right, that's my zero. Uh, we'll call it, that's the zero. I'm not quite on it, but that doesn't matter. I swapped to absolute, completely different readings. And I can reset those. As long as they do it on this XYZ, not the X0, Y0, Z0, so I can, I can change that, I can go X uh, equals 12 for instance, enter, I can, I can reset that in incremental, completely separate of the absolute. And if I ever want to go back to absolute, or incremental I should say, whichever one you're using, it doesn't matter, you can swap between the two. And I know back to where I was before, although I haven't moved the handles, but yeah, you can see how you use it, you can use it as two completely different datum points by using absolute and incremental. So you can be in the middle of doing one setup, um, you know, on a job over here somewhere, and, oh, a quick rush job comes in, little part, and you, oh, I've got a bit of spare bench over here. Without losing all my datums for what I was doing here, I can come over here, reset, use the absolute or the incremental, swap between the two, completely reset the datums, do that part, finish with that, go back to incremental, and go back to exactly the same readings where I was before. So that's a handy feature. So I'm on my theoretical centre now of 117. 
from the original hole. It's a little slow. There's a little 10mm spot drill there. And through with a 10mm cobalt. Thin parallels here. I'd rather have been higher up, but okay. So we've got a 16 drill. It's a step drill, so oh, not step. What do you call it? A step drill. Hang on. Clutches, uh, chuckers are tight. Right, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a new shank drill. That's the word I was looking for. Just to make a bit less work for the boring bar. What's that one? Probably asking a bit much of this mill. Um, inch. grown a bit but uh, saved me a bit of time should be the finishing cut now I have to move it off axis and try it okay I want the four bolt holes now. I want tapped holes in here. I want to be able to bolt the motor on from the outside like that. M5s fits perfectly. So M5s it is. So M5 tapping drill, 4.2, 4.3, 4.2 is fine in aluminium. Um, so yeah, um, holes are 47 between the holes in a square. Might have to bring the uh, quill down a little. So I'm offset 23 and a half, 23 and a half. Centre drill. That's the first one. 23 and a half this way. My date is still zero zero, so I'm I'm going the same each side of the centre hole. That's too far. <laughs> Ooh, that's close. A little bit faster than the centre drill. That's two of them. The zero is the centre mark, 23 and a half is where I'm going. Missed it, there we go. And back 23 and a half this way. Tapping drill now. There's me looking for a chuck key. <laughs> this breakthrough, and I'm going to set a zero because I don't want to go 
there. Drilling holes on the table. Same scores every time, 23 and a half, 23 and a half. And we'll just put a, um, there's no point in me putting a little count in them because I'm going to machine a pocket in here. We haven't got to that yet, um, so I'm going to have to do it afterwards. No. So I'm going to make no cutter up. The shape of the end of the motor, it's 55mm square, 8mm cutter, so you've already taken 4 aside, so 8 from 55 is 47, <laughs> so 47 it gives me 23 and a half again. So I've got a 23 and a half. Think about doing a cut. I'll come in here somewhere, just touch off. And I want to be two millimeters deep. It's just enough to get the pulley more on the shaft when it's on the back here. There's a touch, set a zero on my X. And I said 23 and a half. So I'm going to do 23 and then finish it afterwards. All the way out to 24. Just going to dig in this side wall. Then I'm going to lock the axis. There, there's my 24. up to 24 this way, usual thing, round in a circle or round in a square. Might get a bit of chatter in this corner now. No, nope, seems alright. take the end of the motor so that's the plate done the motor sat down in its little pocket 
I've got to cut the bolts off, a uh, little job on the lathe, that's simple enough, I'm sure you don't want to see that. Um, we've got the centres where we decided on the figure. So, the next thing we're going to do is do the plate that fits between the one on the mill and this plate to a set width. So, yeah, I know they're going to be 240 mil long, so I'm going to cut this piece of aluminium, a couple of pieces, 240 mil long. So you can see the sort of idea that's going to sit uh, in there, something like that. Uh, the two pulleys in the belt between them. Um, and we need a spacer to go in here. We've just talked about that. So the next thing I'm going to do is make the spacer that basically goes in here. Um, I may well cut that end shorter. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, there we are, guys. I think that's about it for this one. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, we do get the odd one or two that hit the thumbs down, and the more of you that hit that thumbs up raises the percentage and helps the channel no end. So hit the thumbs up, hit the bell, subscribe if you want to, all the usual stuff. I do apologise for the bit of yabbering you could hear in the background. I am living in a, a terraced street here, so we've got people that are talking in gardens next door, either side and what have you. I can't really uh, ask them to shut up. I'm sure they're fed up of me talking all the time in my own garden shed. But that's just the way it is. It's quite a sort of close-knit community and it's absolutely fabulous. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for subscribing. And we shall see you all very soon. Cheers now.